lights on because At Your Leisure's Halloween special is starting now. Join Chad Booth and Rhea Rossi as they delve into the outdoor world of the paranormal. Searching for signs of life among the dead, then tremble before the puppet version of Stephen Human as he not only jeeps the Southwest, but cooks up a scary delight for your undead guests. It's time to own the outdoors with AYL's Halloween special, starting now. Halloween 2012, but we are out in a ghost town in Sago Canyon, Utah. Hey everybody, welcome back to your leisure. I'm Chad Booth, excuse me. Well, I'm John Wayne. <laughs> and I'm Colonel Rossi. And we are in search of ghost yeah. town lures yeah. and legends, We're and we curious. have got some great ones lined up for you today. And we are hooking up with the Lone Peak Four Wheel Drive Club. We're going to be visiting a town that's in the process of becoming a ghost town. It's an old highway stop on Highway 6 that has been abandoned virtually other than a couple of residents since the freeway went through. And that's kind of what the deal is here. This is an old mining community we're about to go to. So we have got some really fun exploring to do with a bunch of fun people. And we want you to join some of the members of the club. And we're going to introduce you to our newest cast member who's just learning about four-wheel driving. It's but Steve. That's right, Chad. Happy Halloween, everybody. I'm Puppet Steven Human, and you may be thinking, what kind of haunted, scary adventure can a puppet take you on? Well, I'm going to give you a closer look here at Sego Canyon and the town that still harbors the malignant spirits of the past. It's seriously haunted. Just ask our AYL producer, Tyler. This is a Jeep adventure perfect for this time of year, and you have a puppet as your guide. Yay! Let's go! Throughout the West, ghost towns are plentiful. Remnants of lives once lived and lost in these remote reaches of the frontier. In most cases, little is left but foundations and the occasional half-standing homestead, acting as reminders that nothing lasts forever. Some ghost towns offer more, though. More buildings, more dark crevices, and more frights than you probably expect. Sego Canyon is one such place. We went to the ghost town of Sego, and so this is Sego and Thompson Canyon. Sego Canyon split off from it. It was uh, really fun because the scenery was just amazing. It was just beautiful. We had never known about it before, but it's evidently got quite a history in mining. What I understand, it was like the early 1900s to about 1955. There are still ruins there of old buildings. And those ruins are fairly extensive, from old mines to shops and homes. Sego's history isn't uncommon to other ghost towns in Utah. 25 miles east of Green River, Utah on Interstate 70, you take exit 187 and drive north through the town of Thompson until the pavement ends. There you'll find a town that once hummed with the industry of coal mining and commerce. A rancher named Harry Ballard discovered coal in the early 1890s. He bought the land surrounding his find and started operations on a small scale. In 1911, investors came in and the town began to bloom with shops, homes, and a boarding house. Trouble started almost immediately, though, when the water supply started to dry up. The town continued growing, however, and the mine pumped out coal for the next 36 years. Its last full day of operation was actually October 31st, 1947, as it was permanently shut down the next morning. Today, what remains of Sego is little more than a skeleton of its former self, as the decades have taken their toll on the once vibrant community. Jeepers and recreationists have now started visiting the historic site, listening for the whispers of the past in the rocks and crevices of empty buildings. First, we stopped at a cemetery. That was so cool, the cemetery. I mean, there were some headstones that were like kind of old and creepy looking, but then there were, there were some actually some fairly recent headstones out there so apparently that cemetery is either still being used or or has been used fairly recently. It's a very well-maintained road. Um, 
an understanding that at the very end it leads right into the Ute Indian Reservation. Long before miners called these lands home, Native Americans roamed the dry hills outside Green River. They didn't leave behind any abandoned buildings, of course, but rather some of the most important rock art in the country, a convergence of three distinct cultures here in the canyon. Fremont and Anasazi are pretty common further south. Ute Indians were up more north, so I don't know that I've seen the two come together quite like that. That was a little bit of a surprise to me. I've actually seen that, that pictograph panel in books before and didn't realize where it was, but here it was, right here in Sego Canyon. Wow. The rock art and ghost towns of the West are often a ways from civilization and quite a bit off the beaten path. That fact adds to the excitement of members of off-road groups like the Lone Peak 4x4 Club, leaving the world behind in search of discovery, both historic and sometimes paranormal, is itself a reward few people truly understand. I think one of the main reasons we own a Jeep is because it can get us to places we wouldn't be able to go otherwise. We're not the hardcore Jeepers that look for the biggest rock to climb over and beat our Jeep and expect to repair it every other week and stuff like that, but we use the Jeep as a means of getting out into country that you cannot see otherwise, that you would zip by on a freeway and just totally miss it. You know, some of the stuff that we do is very technical, but but this was just a nice easy drive with some really fun things to see. My favorite part of today was getting right up near the top of Sego Canyon and looking back out over the views. You could see clear into Colorado, you could see clear to Moab, uh, to the west, you could, it, I mean it was just amazing how far you could see up there, it was beautiful. Ghost towns like Sego dot the west and are there to be explored by Jeep, ATV, car or on foot. However you choose to explore, just remember to have your wits about you because you never know what you might find in the dark corners of the world this time of year. It's open, it's available, uh, good things to see. Just come out, take care of the land and enjoy it. There are several websites that can point you toward ghost towns in your area. Ghosttowns.com is probably the easiest to find. Now if you want to find Sego here, it's just a few miles north of I-70 on Utah Exit 187. For AYL, I'm Stephen Human in puppet form. Happy Halloween. Now back to Chad and Rhea, who are just on the other side of the town of Sego right now. Thanks so much, Steve, for that story. And if you all want to know more about it, just go to our website, AYLTV.com. Wow. Isn't this cool? <laughs> this is really, really something else. This is just 1900s, early 1900s. Take a look at the roof on this thing. Marlon Sharp, who is oh. the president of the uh, Lone Peak Four Wheel Drive Club, and we've known Marlon for years. So, yeah. Mar Marlon, do you find stuff like this everywhere? Yes, yeah. Everywhere we go, we try to find uh, what's unique to a particular area. Uh, this this area we've never been to before, and that's exciting because when we go out on on these cheap trips, we like to explore new places and find new things, and it's just wonderful. Well, this is always one of the very fun things about exploring the backcountry four-wheel drive because you get to go places where not many people go and you get to see history unraveling. And that's the neat thing as stuff ages. So we're going to unravel a lot more on the show. And, of course, when we come back, it's sizzling in the outdoors, but it's the dummy version. You'll see what I mean. Welcome back to At Your Leisure, everybody. I'm Puppet Steve. And I'm Darren Kinder. And I'm back to show you some Dutch oven goodness. Bet you didn't think you were gonna see me again, and that's fine, I think I should become a permanent member of the hosting staff here at At Your Leisure. Well, we're in front of the old mill right here in the south end of Salt Lake Valley. This is a very interesting place. People have said that it's haunted. They used to do haunted houses here, actually. So we decided to come over here and kind of have it as our backdrop for this beautiful meal of chili that we're gonna make. And uh, my beautiful assistant here, Darren Kinder, the mad scientist, <laughs> is gonna help be my hands because puppets aren't as dexterous as you might think. Puppet Steve here is going to show you how to make some nice Halloween chili. So we got all our ingredients here. The first things first is that we need a pound of ground beef. Why don't you go ahead and throw that in there, Darren? All right, now sizzle it up. Now you wanna warm up the meat. You wanna get it there so that it's browned. Okay, the recipe is pretty simple. You've got one pound of ground beef, one cup chopped onions, one half cup chopped green bell pepper, but I decided to go with red because it's Halloween, right? Then we have one and a half tablespoons of chili powder, one clove of garlic, half teaspoon ground cumin, four teaspoons of finely chopped jalapeno chili pepper. That's where we're deviating from the recipe. I want this thing hot. 
I don't want it to be some wussy chili, right, Darren? Yeah, but what's ground human? Ground cumin. Oh, yeah. ground cumin. Okay, got it. I'm yeah. the puppet here. Okay, sorry, you get Go off ahead, the joke. Dude, come on. <laughs> get, just help me out here. <laughs> You're not the one that's under a table, you know? <laughs> Jeez. Okay. So we're gonna make this thing hot. We're gonna add about twice that in jalapenos because I like spicy chili. Then you add one 29 ounce can of diced tomatoes, one 15 ounce can of tomato sauce, and one 16 ounce can of chili beans. So pop those in. And throw these in. You're still going to the snail's face here. I'm sorry. I'll the show's only half hour <laughs> long. Just in case you didn't know, Kinder. Ah. <laughs> it is tiring being a puppet. They don't teach you that on Sesame Street. Come on, Big Bird can go all day. Oh, give me a break, <laughs> Big Bird. It smells great. What do we need to add? What else do we need to add? We need to add some cumin and a little bit of chili powder. So why don't you pop that in there now? All right, so you want to dump almost the entire thing in there, but not all of it, not all of it. Don't go crazy. There you go. So with the cumin, okay, go ahead and just sprinkle some in. That's good. That's enough. Not too much. We don't want to over. We don't want to over cumin. Oh, come on. <laughs> At this point, everything's in. Stir it, stir it, make it beautiful. It just We've doesn't got have that to let smell, it simmer yeah. for about an hour and a half because at that point all of the flavors will mix together and that's what we want. It'll taste really good and we want good chili, good spicy chili. That's one of the reasons why you cook it in a Dutch oven because in a Dutch oven you get all of the complex flavors from the previous meals. And so your chili, whatever you make, Kinder, will be absolutely awesome. Now what I like to do is put the cheese in now, all of the cheese inside of it because a lot of people will wait until it's an individual bowl, but this way you add all the cheese and it makes it kind of sticky and gross looking for Halloween. I think that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So pop that in there. Go ahead and stir it. Just throw it all in. All of the cheese. All of it? All the cheese. Because it'll just, it'll look gross. It'll taste de delicious, but it will look disgusting. All right, Darren, go ahead and give it a try. Right, Tell me you, what you think. You try a little. Mmm, that's good. That's good puppet what, chili. What does a puppet know? It doesn't have enough felt in it for the puppet, though. Oh, well, no, that, that is good. That's it's good. really good. Does it need anything? Maybe a little extra cumin. Oh, shut up. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, we'll have this recipe on our website, AYLTV.com. We'll have everything so you can make it for your Halloween treat. We'd like to thank Camp Chef, our good friends who have supplied all the gear for us today. So, Darren, are we ready for the party? Let's, let's, My let's get going. scientist friend. Yes. All right, well, we got to take a commercial break. When we come back, we'll have more of the AYL Halloween special. Let's see. Thanks, Norman. Welcome back to At Your Leisure for our Halloween special. We're here at Thompson Springs on our way to the Sago Canyon area we ran across this town. I got your room. The executive suite? Uh, I don't think so. But Norman said that it was his mother's favorite room. Oh. I could hear her from the back. Oh, that's so nice. Yes. Well, Norman. he seems like a nice young man. Yes. He's a little so, bit messy, though. What's... I don't know. I can't see in the rooms. They said that, uh, you know, they said... For you to know what our rooms are like, you'll just have to rent one. Sounds to me like a politician I knew once. So here it is, room six. Do you rent them by the hour or the day? Um, there was no checkout time. Hmm, interesting. Mm. Well, well why don't I, you I don't know. I kind of got a bad feeling. I don't think I want to do this. Okay, well, you get the, you, my room's just next door. If you got a problem, you go ahead. I'll meet you over at the cafe. Okay. <laughs> This is like the Twilight Zone, because everything is old and rusted, but there's still sugar in this, sugar dispensers. And look, there's fresh maple syrup in that jar. No trespassing, no kidding. Who would want to? I don't think anybody's been in this building in at least 50 years. Somebody lives in this room. I'm getting out of here. Here's Johnny! 
They done hung Jimmy Bell right there off them rafters. And every night, at about midnight, he start hearing the worst wailing and screaming. Curtains up in this motel room. What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> you know, the funny thing about Halloween is you could just like really <laughs> let yourself go, which we have because our field producer has creeped himself out and says we got to get out of here before the sun goes down. <laughs> so, Seriously, yeah. We're time to move on. <laughs> Can't have fun, scary stuff anymore. We'd like to thank Rocky Mountain ATVMC for that story. And check those guys out on the web at RockyMountainATVMC.com. They rock. We are in the town of Sago, okay, or Sego. I don't care, however you want to talk about it, but or what remains of the town of yes. Sego. And, you know, this is a pretty spooky place for Halloween. There are things that go bump in the daytime, let alone the night. Yeah. Okay, there is something back there. I can hear it. Can you hear it? Well, I'm getting out. I'm getting out. I'm getting out. Look out. What do you think, Chad? Let's go for a drive. Right there. Well, I can obviously see you had this car out already. <laughs> Look at that. Kind of looks like Kijo. <laughs> ah! Oh my god, it was a dog! <laughs> <laughs> we have more adventure to find. Stay with us. We'll be back with more of our Halloween special in Ghost Towns. <laughs> Welcome back to At Your Leisure for our Halloween costume. And as I'm kind of winding down as the big cowboy, I've we've discovered that there are other kinds of people here. Now, where, what happened to your costume? This is my costume. <laughs> <laughs> at least you're a happy, at least you're a, a, a happy ghoul. It's wonderful being out here in the great wilderness. East or west? West, Wicked Witch of the West for sure. And I turned him into a frog. What did you say to her? I, I, I told her that I'm a jeeper and loves to be green. What are you two? Oh, I've morphed into a butterfly. Well, Cookie, because of the costume and the character, we've decided this year to award the Cookie Award to the little green frog. <laughs> I think he's got an identity crisis because he is, looks like Kermit the Frog, but he's eating the cookie like Cookie Monster. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> well, listen, right now is the part of the show where we usually tell you about upcoming events. Those need to wait for just a minute because I need to tell you about something really important. If you're a snowmobiler, you really need to be paying attention to this. The Shoshone National Forest has come up with their alternatives for the new travel plan. This is the forest that sits north of Yellowstone. And if you don't want Yellow, the Shoshone to start looking like Yellowstone as far as snowmobile travel, you need to get involved in this. The alternatives are listed on the Forest Service website, and you need to go and look at those and make your comments. Okay, now on to the fun stuff. Touche. Also, we want to talk about the Hump and Bump event, which is happening next weekend in Logandale, Nevada. It's a lot of fun. Get your 4x4, four four, bring your family out there. they got over seven trails. It's going to be just a wonderful time. Step on up. There you go. Don't forget to get your glass of witch's brew to go with your uh, your ghoul burger here. This is this is living in Sago Canyon right now on Halloween. And you know what? Mm -hmm. I haven't been the least been scared all day today. Really? No, no ghosts or anything. Yeah, no. We thank you for tuning in every week. We try and make the holidays fun and just every weekend fun. And uh, you know, if you got a chance to get out in the great outdoors pack a Camp Chef Grill along with you like That's we did. Right. We want to say thanks because they're great folks. Thanks, Woo! guys. Okay, I'm scared. Get your gun out. <laughs> anyway, thanks. <laughs> thanks so much. We got Rhea under control. She didn't jump off the cliff between now and the next time we all get together. Make sure you get out with your family and friends. Go to the great outdoors at, at your, your leisure. leisure. All right, who's Let's next? Eat. Great YL, I'm Stephen Human in puppet form. Oh, my hand's slipping out. What does barbecued puppet taste like? I'm gonna just thump.
Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I'm Chad Booth. Today on AYL, we're in the outdoors with our friends and family celebrating the beauty of the West. Join us for an adventure through the heights of the Uinta Mountains by ATV, where we discover a cabin that will add an extra touch of nostalgia to your holiday. Then, how can your family cook a Thanksgiving dinner in the outdoors? Steve and Rhea have the recipe. Finally, how do off-roaders show their thanks for public lands? Find out right now on At Your Leisure. Right now, we're going to whet your appetite with a trailhead adventure that I think is a story that's appropriate for the holidays. Take a look. Everyone remembers the story of the first Thanksgiving. We learned about it in elementary school. Pilgrims and Indians celebrating how by working together, they could change things for the better. The timeless tale is mirrored in modern times as well, especially this year on Public Lands Day when Jeepers from the Lone Peak 4x4 Club and members of the Forest Service showed their thanks by working together to protect our access and our historical legacy. So today we're here for National Public Lands Day and we have a bunch of different groups up here participating today. And these are all groups that are very active in our canyon. This one day each year, all fees on public lands are waived so anyone can come out and enjoy these treasured areas. For some groups though, Public Lands Day means a lot more than just a free pass into a park or access to a trail. We're here at Graveyard Flats protecting this historic area, installing fences, enlarging the area. The project today isn't just about trail access though. Graveyard Flats is the only remnant left of the old mining town of Forest City. In the 50s uh, there was a fence built around it, a white picket fence, that lasted for about 40 years before it kind of fell to the, the harsh winters and just uh, disrepair. So here we are today to uh, amend that problem. We had our logs, they were in Heber, so our Forest Service employees went and picked up those logs. They brought them to a different site, and then the four-wheel drive groups with their you know, vehicles and trailers, we would load their vehicles, and then they would drive up here, and we would unload. And that was our biggest concern. We had to come up and put all the assets, or all the important parts of this fence, up there, ready to go, so that on Saturday, we didn't have to haul anything else up there. With five Jeeps and over 60 volunteers, after four days of work, the Lone Peak 4x4 members were able to build the fence that will survive the harsh mountain conditions for years to come. I was just really impressed that something of that magnitude could be done, working along with the Forest Service people. And it's exciting to see that the four-wheel drive community can get together to help preserve some of these important things uh, that are part of history. Many individuals still see off-highway vehicles like Jeeps and ATVs as a destructive force instead of exploration tools. Projects like these are slowly helping to show OHVs and their owners for what they truly are, outdoor lovers who want to protect these lands just as much as anyone else. Get involved with a group like these groups. These groups are making a difference. They're protecting, you know, the ability to be out here and recreate and still have it be such a beautiful area. And these groups are what's making a difference for public lands. We've had an ethic of turning things back better than they were before if we can. And, and to stay on the trail and, and do these things. We all show thanks in different ways. But for public land users, there's no better form of gratitude than a day of service in the outdoors. From Public Lands Day 2012, I'm Don Dunwell.